a monster matchup in Columbus. Number two Ohio State hosting number eight Penn State. And things getting chippy before the game. Everybody's psyched up. Everybody's ready to go. The last three games between the Buckeyes and Nittany Lions have been decided by three points or less. And look who's back. Chase Young, one of the best in the nation, projected number one overall draft pick. First Buckeyes drive. J.K. Dobbins in for the touchdown, and Ohio State takes a 7-0 lead. 13 plays in the drive, 12 rushes. Capped off by that touchdown. Sixth straight game with a rushing touchdown for Dobbins. Next Ohio State drive. Touchdown. Not so fast. Justin Fields fumbles as he crosses the goal line. Penn State recovers. It's a touchback. Third fumble of the season for Fields, and he suffered a little injury there, and he also suffered from a little bout of fumbleitis in this game. Early third quarter, Justin Fields to K.J. Hill, 24-yard scoring strike, and it's 21-0 Ohio State just like that. But the lead would slip away. Ensuing Penn State drive, Sean Clifford, the Ohio kid, one of the best in the state of Ohio coming out of high school, did not get offered from Ohio State. Said it was a little personal. Well, he gets banged up here, knocked out of the game. So in comes Will Levis. In for the injured Clifford. Later in the drive. Just hand it off here. That's what you got to do, young man. Hands it off to Journey Brown. And he's in for the touchdown. 18 yards. And Penn State makes it a 21-7 game. They take a look. It's in. Call stance. Ensuing Ohio State possession. First play of the drive. Dobbins runs left, but then coughs up the football and recovered by the Nittany Lions. Back in business. Here comes Penn State again. So, what are they going to do? They're going to capitalize. Levis in for the touchdown. And all of a sudden, it goes from 21-0 to 21-14. Next Ohio State drive. Justin Fields loses the football again and recovered again by Penn State. Three lost fumbles in a game for Ohio State for the first time since 2009. He loses it before the knee gets down. It was reviewed, but it's confirmed it was a fumble. So Penn State now with a chance to turn it into points. Chase Young gets the sack. Has the single season sack record for the Buckeyes. Passing former Jets great Vernon Golston. Missed two, and a, two games because of suspension. Came in with 13 and a half sacks, second in FBS. Early fourth, Justin Fields makes a play. Finding Chris Olave, who makes a heck of a catch. 28-yard touchdown, and Ohio State takes a 28-17 lead. Late fourth quarter. Levis looking to keep it alive. Uh-uh. Broken up. And Penn State with a heck of an effort as Ohio State gets tested by the Nittany Lions. But they hang on. Justin Fields, 16 to 22, 188 yards, two touchdowns, two lost fumbles, three lost fumbles in all for Ohio State in this game. But they win the game. 28 to 17, take care of business. Third straight win against Penn State. Uh, they do not cover, though. So if you had Penn State plus 19 and a half, you are celebrating. The under cash is at 58. Ohio State clinches the Big Ten East for the third straight season, earning a spot in the Big Ten Championship. Up next, the big game against Michigan in Ann Arbor. As for this game, Ohio State gets tested, but they survive at home. Here's Dennis Dodd with more from Columbus. Early in the second half, Ohio State led 21 to nothing, and it looked like they were cruising to another easy win. They would won every game to that point by at least 24 points. Well, a funny thing happened on the way to the route. Ohio State turned the ball over three times, four fumbles total, lost three, losing three fumbles for the first time since 2009, a span of 137 games. That allowed Penn State to get back in it, just enough to make it close, and what ended up being a 28-17 game was called by the Buckeyes afterwards a character builder. They said, we needed this. Going into a stretch, which includes Michigan, and then the Big Ten Championship game, and then you would hope, if you're a Buckeye fan, the playoff. In fact, 
Coach Ryan Day said before the game, this starts the playoff for us, a stretch of five games, if they make it that far, that begins with Penn State. Now, 28-17 doesn't sound like they dominated at all, but they did. They outgained Penn State almost 2-1, to one, better athletes all over the field, and Chase Young coming back from two weeks out because of the NCAA suspension, three sacks to lead the country, at least for now, with 16 and a half sacks. That's it from here, from Columbus. Ohio State wins again and clinches the Big Ten East. Big game, Dennis Dodd covering that for us in Columbus. And he mentioned Chase Young back from suspension. Three sacks, nine tackles, one forced fumble. Now has 16 and a half sacks on the season. And you'd think if he hadn't missed those two games, he'd be up maybe around 20. If you're curious, the single season sack record, it's officially belonging to Arizona State's Trail Suggs, who had 24 sacks in 2002. Uh, so Chase Young's probably not going to get there, but uh, heck of a heck of a season for the young man who's projected to be a number one pick in next year's NFL draft. And back here with Bryant McFadden, and we now welcome the co-host of the Cover 3 podcast, Chip Patterson, Barton Simmons. Ohio State beats Penn State despite three lost fumbles. First time that happened for the Buckeyes in 10 years. Chase Young returns, three sacks, 16 and a half for the season. Barton, your takeaways from the game you saw in Columbus, Penn State, Ohio State, as Ohio State gets the win. You know, I think we saw Ohio State in a close game. Um, that, that's sort of a box you can check now off that list. Penn State tested Ohio State. Uh, Penn State forced them into some tough spots. Credit that Penn State defense for forcing some turnovers. Uh, but not only can we check off the box of, of Ohio State winning in a close game, we can also check off the box of Ohio State dominating a good opponent because those three fumbles you mentioned were the only thing that kept Penn State in this football game. There were some moments where it looked like Ohio State was going to really pull away and run away with this thing. And, and, and despite the final score, which was 11 points uh, differential, uh, th this was a game where Ohio State was a lot better than Penn State beyond the scoreboard. So uh, you can check that box too. So, so Ohio State remains to me the best looking team in college football. And Penn State just did a heck of a job to even keep it close. So uh, Ohio State came into the game averaging a margin of victory of 41.6. Yeah, that's right. 41.6 margin of victory coming into the game. But what we thought that might be is that Ohio State's got a really explosive offense. We love Justin Fields. He's so athletic. He's a great dual threat. We know J.K. Dobbins is great. And whether you're talking about K.J. Hill or Benjamin Victor, a lot of great weapons over there. The Ohio State offense puts up big numbers. But what today showed me is that the reason why Ohio State is one of the best teams in the country is because of its defense. And if we want to talk about Heisman Trophy contenders, it's not going to be Justin Fields. No, it is going to be Chase Young, and it is going to be that Ohio State defense. The reason why Ohio State is a real threat to win a national championship is not because of the offense. It is because of its defense. And I think that way that that group showed up answered the call, overcame the turnovers with the stops that they needed to win this game. Uh, that was just a, a really, really impressive showing because when we talk about margin of victory, yes, you do need to score points to get there, but you also need to limit your opponent's points. And maybe from today, we get to see that the reason why Ohio State is beating its opponents by 40 points per game is because its defense is absolutely elite, keeping other teams from the end zone. Yeah, I'm right there with you, Chip. I, I love Ohio State's defense. Uh, Chase Young jumped right back into the lineup, didn't miss a beat. He is the best player in college football. He should be the first player to come off the board in 2020's NFL Draft. He's that type of player. He's like the Aaron Donald of college football. And then looking at their offense, something I found out today, I kind of have my thoughts about this player, but the most valuable player on Ohio State's offense is J.K. Dobbins because he's been one of the more consistent running backs, not just in the Big Ten, but in college football. But when he is rolling, that takes pressure off of Justin Fields' plate. And today, Justin Fields put up, for, 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 for Fields like numbers, pedestrian numbers. He played sloppy football. Uh, he, he wasn't very effective throwing the football, taking shots on the football field. He did more running the football than throwing the football. But when you have a guy like J.K., that can carve up 157 yards, 38 carries, two touchdowns. I mean, you get in favorable third down situations and they were able to capitalize. So yes, it was a big time plus to see Ohio State win a close sloppy like game. I'm not surprised because they were playing at home and their defense is that good. 
But watching J.K. Dobbins, I think he's the most valuable player on the offense. All right, so Ohio State win sets up the mass massive uh, matchup against Michigan now next week.